This week, democracy is sweeping across Egypt for the first time in centuries. Now, voters there are picking a president. The election so far appears to be going without major problems. But in another country, the opposite is true. There is chaos instead of democracy. What are we talking about? We're talking about Mali. It's in West Africa. And here's what happened. Just eight weeks ago, army soldiers overthrew the president, took control of the country, and then installed their own leader. Well, this week, a mob of protesters broke into the presidential palace beat up the interim president so badly that he is now in a hospital in France. Mali, it's safe to say, is a mess. There is no leadership. The, the population is furious. And now we learn a possible safe haven for al-Qaeda. In just a minute, I'm going to talk to a man who wants to be the next president of Mali. But first, I want to bring in Michael Holmes to talk a little bit about this. And Michael, first of all, I mean, imagine, right? I mean, just, just take it here. Mm. If, if Thugs and terrorists broke into the White House, dragged President Obama out, beat him up, and he had to go to the hospital, and they're all hanging out on the, on the North Lawn. Yeah, I think, I think that is what happened. That shows what they're doing now. Seriously. They are all hanging out that in the palace. That is what happened in Mali. Yeah. Tell, tell us what is going on there. Well, you know, what, what you had there was, uh, there's that photograph. That's what the protesters are doing, out, uh, doing now, just, just chilling out in the palace. You know, what you had was a model of development and democracy for 20 years there in West Africa, and now you have essentially a power vacuum. And to take a little bit further than the simple coup. What happened, the military was annoyed that the government wasn't giving them enough resources to fight rebels in the north of the country. While all this is going on in the capital, the rebels in the north seized vast swaths of area and they split the country basic, basically north and south and declared an independent state. So who, who are these guys, the ones who are now sitting in the presidential palace, the equivalent of the White House? Well, they're, they're civilians, they're protesters. The main concern is the rebels in the north of the country. Now, while all this is going on, they've seized power in the north. It, it's a medley of different rebel groups and, uh, and, and criminal groups is as well. Is there a link to Al-Qaeda? There is, and this is the problem. They have been, uh, this, this, this rebel force, if you like, has been infiltrated by an arm of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. We talk a lot about Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. This is Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, which is just a geographical term more than anything. Now, they have basically hijacked what the rebels wanted to do, which is just independence for the Turag people, and turned it into a religious and Islamist uh, uprising. They have instituted Sharia law. You can't play football anymore in a football-mad country. Uh, you can't watch television. Women have to dress head to toe, covered up, can't leave the house without a wrap. All of that stuff that goes along with that. So should the U.S. be worried? Should they be concerned about what happens in Mali? Yeah, they, they should. They, they, they should on a humanitarian level for a start. But they also should because here's another example of al-Qaeda hitching on to the descent of uh, local problems and incorporating themselves into the fight, seizing territory. And you know, what, what you've got here is the risk of it spreading. You know, you, you've already got al-Qaeda now in Mali. We, we've got al-Qaeda in Yemen. There are elements of it in Algeria, which is next door. Niger, which is next door. It's what some analysts are calling an arc of instability there. What is next for Mali? I understand that they at least are trying to form a government. They are trying to get elections in the future here. Mm. They, they, they might actually get some sort of leadership, but it's going to be very difficult. Well, the problem is now, yes, they, they do hope to do that. And ECOWAS, the regional sort of uh, grouping, if you like, of African nations, uh, they're trying to force back, get the president back, get the army out. The army seems OK to do that. Now you've got the North being held by Islamist rebels, including al-Qaeda. So even if you do get that stable government in the capital, they've got to go sort out the North, which is a problem. Again, you've got this spread of al-Qaeda, this footprint of, uh, of al-Qaeda throughout many countries with porous borders and weak central government. All right, Michael, thank you. We're actually I'm, glad, I'm glad you tackled this one. It's important. It, I, it was alarming, yes. actually, when, when you read about it, when you see the pictures and you realize what's taking place and there. And what it means, I mean, bang, 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 I mean, bang. It, it has repercussions throughout the whole Indeed. region. right to here. All right, thank you, Michael. Appreciate